Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm back to talk about Supernatural, this time episode 1111, titled Into the Mystic, which premiered Wednesday, January 27, 2016 on The CW, and I do apologize, guys, I already recorded this, but apparently that recording, you don't hear anything at all for some reason, there's something wrong with my microphone, I found out after recording it, and I kept in time too, so that's a bit disappointing, so I'm definitely gonna try to cover everything, maybe even faster, but hopefully, um... We'll find out. So, um, with that said, let's begin um, with what did we learn in this episode? Um, the creature of the week is a banshee, and they feed on the vulnerable, whether it's physical vulnerability or emotional vulnerability. That's who they target, and then they eat a portion of the brain out of it. So, there's that. They kind of look like a phantom type thing. They don't take a corporeal form. So that was pretty interesting itself. It kind of looked like a bloody, see-through witchy with very hairy, very rary bushy haired being with sunken eyes or at least that's what i'm remembering so there's that um during this mantra case we meet um fellow hunter eileen she ends up turning out to be a descendant of a men of letters so she's a legacy like sam and dean and she's actually um the first uh she introduces us to the world of sign language actually so for eileen um she uh her parents were killed by the banshee 30 years ago when she was just a baby and after, from that whole thing a hunter found her with bleeding ears which resulted in her being deaf i think it's partial deafness though because she can still hear um everything around her to an extent it's either that or she's really good at lips um lip reading so there's that but i definitely like um how she tried to approach the Banshee case, and it was just great to see. We also meet another uh, character in the form of Mildred, and she's one of the residents at the retirement home who helps them with the case. They think she's going to be an ex-target. Turns out to be turns out to be someone else that I'll touch upon later. But she definitely brings a new side to the whole case in itself, and she has a very deep interest in Dean. I'll just keep it at that. Um, we also see um, Lucifer still possessing Castiel's vessel. And he is enjoying being topside again, and he actually seems to be invested in trying to um, defeat Amara. And he actually runs into Dean, or Dean catches him back at the bunker. So unfortunately, Lucifer knows where the bunker is now. And um, they share some information about Amara, so I'll touch upon that later on. But what was the most shocking moment of the episode? I have to say it would be Eileen wasn't the Banshee. And when she was introduced and the way she was acting around the Winchesters and zeroing in on um, what they were doing, watching what they were doing, I really thought that she was the Banshee. I'm glad that she wasn't and that she got to bring out a different side. We got to see another member of another legacy, so I really liked that. So it was good. I hope that we get to see her again. And she definitely seemed like she had a lot of common with Sam. So hopefully a uh, friendship can form. And maybe um, she could be a future contact we see later on. Uh, top three favorite moments. Um, it's actually a few. Uh, first one has to be in the form of the sneak peek that they released early. And that was uh, Mildred talking about living a, life, a long and happy life. Um, to Dean, and it seemed that Dean really took away some um, insight from that conversation, because as a hunter, you don't really think that you're going to live a long life or a happy one as well. You're going to die while blaze of glory and like going down with a fight type thing. So it was great to see both Sam and Dean's thoughts about retiring from hunting, shifting, and maybe having them fight for an end where they survive. So that was great. Um, you had a little bit of funny moment between Dean and Mildred. They just had, their dynamic was uh, pretty amusing. And uh, it was just fun to see that lightheartedness between the two of them. Um, also, with that said, uh, later on, Mildred, since she has no filter at all, you see that throughout the episode, especially when Dean's involved, um, she actually brings up the fact that it never would have worked between her and Dean because he's pining after someone else and she's jealous of the girl he's pining after. Now, I'm believing we're all meant to think that it's Amara that he's hung up for or he's unwanted, unwillingly hung up over, but I'm betting a lot of Destiel fans that were going crazy over that pining comment, so that was funny. Um... But yeah, Mildred had no filter, and she definitely shows it when she's using sign language with Eileen 
uh, talking about how um, great looking the Winchesters were, especially Dean, so that was funny. Um, another favorite was the fact that we got to meet another legacy in Eileen, so I hope we do see her again in the future. And another favorite moment has to be Lucifer and himself. It, especially when he was feeding the ducks at the very beginning, you don't really think that you'd see Castiel doing that, let alone Lucifer, but to see it a two-in-one type thing, it was, it was entertaining. And it was just great to see his conversation as well with Dean, as he tries to be cast to not throw him off or anything, but it was great to see them talking about Amara and how Dean has this unwilling connection to her and how they both have were in a position where they could have killed Amara and yet they weren't able to or they couldn't finish or they couldn't follow through with it. And um, I think this is the first time Dean actually tells someone that there's this bond between him and Amara. So I'm glad that was brought up to someone, even if it is Lucifer. But maybe if Lucifer has the news, he can figure out some way to stop Amara. So there's that. Um, top three peeved moments. Uh, I actually didn't have any. I, was, I actually enjoyed the episode. I didn't have, like, it didn't leave me, like, last episode with, like, jaw-dropping, oh my god moment. But it was fine. I really I really enjoyed this um, episode. It it served its purpose as a standalone case type setup, but it also still um, had parts of the over overarching arc to it in the form of the whole Amara talk with Castillo and Dean. So there's that. Um, what will I remember most about this episode? The fact that it's the first time we actually got to see um, Lucifer pretending to be cast. I mean, we saw a bit of it at the end of the last episode, but we fully get to see it in this episode, especially when he's with Dean, but Dean thought that there was something a little off, but Cassifer, I guess we'll call it, or the fans are calling it at least, is the what I'll remember most. Um, whoops, um, random questions. Um, so first one, uh, Dean was actually the target for the Banshee, not Mildred like they thought, or like they thought. So since the Banshee only targets those who are vulnerable, what makes Dean vulnerable enough that he became the target for the Banshee? Is it meant to be the vulnerability he has is because of his connection with Amara and the insecurity he gets from what that could possibly mean? Or is it some other vulnerability we don't know about? Um, another question would be, um, Lucifer went to the bunker to try to find a spell about Amara. Was he telling the truth about that? And if he was telling the truth, did he find it and that's why he left the bunker? Or did he leave so that the Winchesters didn't come back and ask him all these questions. Or did Dean telling him about the connection between him and Amara help Lucifer with another game plan against her? Um, I'm definitely curious about that, but I do like the fact that Lucifer actually wants to help stop Amara, whether he's going to team up or he's going to do it on his own. At least he wants to stop the common enemy that we see. So there's that. Um, another one, random question would be, what about Crowley? Last time we saw him, he was in the presence of Lucifer. And the fact that we didn't see him in this episode has me a little worried for the guy. So where could he be or what happened to him? Uh, so let's move to predictions. Predictions quickly for the... Based off that promo for episode 11-12, we do see the return of Sheriff Jody Mills, as well as um, Claire Novak and Alex. And if you remember Alex back in episode 919, she was the girl who was um, living with vampires. She was basically um, luring humans in so that the vampires could um, could um, feed off of them. So there's that. And then Jody took her in, wanted to save her. And then last time we saw Claire Novak was back in episode 1020 when she was trying to find her mom only to ha see her be killed before her eyes. So she was sent to Jody to kind of put her... Um, put her life back together to get it back on track. But apparently in next week's episode, Claire is hunting again. So I think Jody calls in Sam and Dean to try to talk some sense into Claire or something like that, or at least put some perspective to it. But that'll be interesting to see. Overall though, since we saw no signs of Amara or Crowley in this episode, I'm hoping prediction right here is that we see some form of update about them. Now for Amara, she could still be recovering from that whole massive smiting thing that happened at 11.09. Maybe she's slowly recovering or maybe she's having trouble recovering and she's still weak. Um, hopefully we'll know about more we'll know more about that later. Um, and then for Crowley, it could be that Castiel, Lucifer, Cast Lucifer, Lucifer, whoever, whatever you want to call him, it's possible that he locked Crowley up so that Crowley 
can warn the Winchesters about the fact that Lucifer is topside and riding Castiel's vessel. So there's that. Um, but it seems like the angels can tell pretty quickly that Lucifer is topside. Um, wonder if that's the same things for the same thing for the demons, and if so, when is all that going to get back to the Winchester, Winchesters? So that's something to look forward to. Um, and it's definitely going to be a fun ride. So what did you guys think of the episode? Um, what did you like about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Also, don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And to check out my other videos if you have the time. Um, let's keep this conversation going. Thank you so much for the previous comments in this video. Um, looking forward to reading more of your thoughts, theories, and opinions about what is happening in the, um, in the show. Um, yeah, so let's just keep that conversation going. Also, if you want more information about Supernatural, whether that is um, episode news, episode synopses, promos, gifs, stills, quotes, any of that, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that will be down below. If you want a more detailed recap of the episode, a play-by-play, -play, if you will, with my in-the-moment reactions included, um, check out my live journal account. Link for that will be down below with the entry link to it so you could just read that if you want a refresher in itself but i do suggest you watch the episode itself but it's always nice to read it through because sometimes you pick up some stuff that way than you would any other way so there's that as well and that's about it so uh, thank you guys for watching i truly appreciate it i hope you come back next week to see what i have to say about uh the next episode especially with Jody Mills returning. I do love her character. So there's that. And um, I'll leave it off with this question for you guys. Uh, it came to me the other day, actually. But do you think Amara is going to be a season-long bad guy? Um, or do you think she's going to be uh, a two-season type bad guy? The last time we saw a two-season bad guy was in Azazel, seasons one and two. And then Lucifer, seasons four and five. And then every big bad so far from since then have lasted one season so do you think amara is going to be a one season or um two plus seasons let me know in the comments below i love to hear your own theory about that and yeah so this is mel wishing you all a great day great week wherever you are and until next time um see you then bye for now